wicked world. Now the rules seem coming. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket. By the fans, for the fans. Yes, yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. I'm one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt. And with me as ever, I say as ever, he's back. He's back. <laughs> Happy birthday to the one and only Santoki Nagilendran. Yes, yes. Good to be back, Mash. And I know Mash has been holding it down. Mr. Monday night with the live call-ins, getting guests from the Caribbean, America, Brazil, of all places, so you know that that's something, Mash. I think you're trying to going to try keep it on a run every Monday in it at the moment. Um, so that's that's something we've added to the to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast portfolio. But yeah, as you said, good to be back, and we're here to do a quick discussion on the upcoming England Test tour. You know, starting in July, it, we've got a World Cup before then, but you know, it's a Test series in England. It's always big. It's especially pertinent with the regional season, the final round taking place as we record this. So we're here to look at. Who's locked in their place for the England tour? Who's a maybe? Who's at threat of getting dropped? And who might be the newcomers who might emerge into this squad match? Yeah, it kind of seems... I mean, maybe we're getting... Everyone's kind of done bits and pieces on this, ourselves uh, included, throughout the, like, six, and currently as we record this, the final round of the West Indies Championship. But we're kind of going to get ahead of the curve here by looking at it logically. Because sometimes I feel like people do the hyperbolic um, response to all of this. But logically, who gets to keep their spot going going to England? The last time we did a video on this, Santoki, we looked specifically at the opener issue. And we spoke about Solazano and McCaskey and Mikhail Louis and uh, who else did we throw? Oh, Tay Shandapal, obviously. But they're... There are bigger issues than just who's going to open in England. So what I'm going to do, Santoki, and like you said, it's going to be a bit of a quick one, but one that will garner undoubtedly a lot of debate and discussion. Um, what, what I want us to do, because first things first, the, the first thing that people need to understand is the squad to England will only be 15 players. I think people got a bit confused during COVID and the pandemic and thought that 18 man squads or 18 people squads would be a thing of the future and, you know, bubble, um, reserve bubble replacements and all of that. I think Johnny Grave, I can't remember if he came on the show and said it or if I just, we asked him in whatever a message. But Johnny Grave said, uh, like about a year ago, however many months ago, said, we are going back to 15 man squads on a tour. So when people are saying, what about this person? What about that person? They always have to keep it in the context of it's only a 15 man squad. So when we go through, who's going to England, the first thing we have to do, Santoki, is go back and look at the 15-man squad that drew the Test Series in Australia. And we have to be honest, Santoki, and say that there is an Australian premium um, hanging over that 15-man squad because they achieved something that no other West Indian squad had achieved in 29 years previous um, by winning a Test and therefore drawing the Test Series. So we know that no matter how much people might say this player needs to be dropped. If that player was part of the squad in Australia, there's a certain premium and caveat that has to be added to whatever is going on for them right now. But let's run through it, Santos. We're going to run through each of the 15 players and try and establish who... First, and f once we get to the, the final... Once we get to the 15th player, we're going to work out how many spots are genuinely available for the, the touring squad of England. So let's go. Let's get into it. Because some of these names are easier than others. Right, let's start at the top, Santoki. Craig Brathwaite, in or out? Yeah, that, that's an easy one. In, the cream has risen to the crop um, in the regional season. You know, he's hit, what is he, 475 runs in his 
we were one in his left to go. Average 43. We know the quality of Craig Brathwaite, no doubt. I mean, he had a slow start to the regional season. Still mm. weren't any questions about his place in the press side, but it was a slow start, uncharacteristic for him. Um, but he's sort of proven his quality as the season has gone on. And so by the end of it, he with one in his left, he could end up being um, second highest run scorer. So Craig Brathwaite definitely in. Yeah, and at the time, of, as we're recording this, people, we do know, of course, that it's day two of the final round. Uh, and Barbados Pride are currently, at the time of recording, 20 without loss in their second innings against West Indies Academy. Craig is 14 out. Craig's the captain. Uh, his stock is sky high, given we just drew an away series in Australia. So he's going. Number two, Santoki, his partner. This Johnny is difficult, Ball. Santoki. This is difficult. Now, let's just before, obviously, it's Tejan around Shandapal. But before you give me your answer, let me just pull up his regional stats. I think he's got one innings left against CCP. A uh, CCP. <laughs> <laughs> against CCC. Um, so after 11 innings, in this championship, he has 281 runs at 28, Santoki. 100, no 50s. It's a, it's a down at, bad season. Yeah. Before you answer that, also, he was bad in Australia, subpar at home versus South uh, versus India, and down rotten in, in South Africa. <laughs> it's, it's, not looking, it's not looking good for Chandapur, you know. But to be fair, when we did our opener video... We did say if he could get a big score, his name's it back in the mix. Literally the next game he hit a century, 101 out. However, the bad form has continued after that. And I know the first game against Trinidad was rained out, um, so he didn't get an opportunity to bat. But if you've had 11 innings and you're West Indies opening batsman and you're averaging 28 at the regional season, it's not it's not looking good for Tej Chandable. So I think he'll still make the squad. I, I think his place, it's only right, match. his place in the 11 has to be called at this point. So you think he's out of the 11, but still in the squad? Is he in, no, Santoki, you have to give me an answer. Is he in the 15-man squad? Yes or yeah, no? Yeah, he's in the 15, Tejas in the 15-man squad. I think if he's not making the 11, he's going as as an as a backup opener, surely. Oh, sugar. This is a big call, you know, Santoki. Yeah, a big listen, man. This, big listen. Oh, oh, you know the uncles are coming straight into the chat at this point of the video. Wait, what are you saying, Mash? What are you saying? Mash trying to mediate out here. What, what, what are you saying? <laughs> I tried to get through the whole video without giving any answers, you know. <laughs> um, I think Tej might get dropped. Ooh, completely from the squad. Yeah, from the squad. squad. I think he might be gone. Unless... Unless when Guyana have to bat to win and more than likely win the championship against CCC, unless like he scores a hundred to end the season, and therefore that would lead to recency bias, and it'd be two hundreds in the tournament. I think he might get dropped. You know. So if we're leading on from that, all right. So you've got two openers in the. Uh... In that fifteen-man squad, you say in McCaskey because he would. Be so this the is the next question, right? That's why I didn't want to answer it because that's who I'm going to next. Yeah, Zachary McCaskey, Santoki. So McCaskey, let's just bring up his numbers. Obviously, he's also over, he's currently batting with Craig at the moment. So McCaskey, thirteen innings, mm. three hundred and forty-five runs, at thirty-one apiece, one hundred and one fifty. So Tej is averaging twenty-eight and has had three bad test series in a row. McCaskey has averaged 31 this season with 150. Hmm. So is that enough to keep McCaskey in the squad? That, that's an interesting one because they both hit, they're both, high score has both been 101. McCaskey's mm -hmm. averaging 31, slightly higher than Tage, but he's played more innings. Yeah. So in, in some way, they're, they're, they're part of each other because of McCaskey playing more innings. But I would argue if you're a backup opener, surely in a regional season, you have to comprehensively outbat the current bat opening. Oh, that's a good point. Good point. I think if you're on par, surely the benefit of the doubt, if you're throwing in Tage's experience of playing Test cricket across the world for the past year or so, um, surely that experience leverages it more in Tage's favour. If you're thinking that they're both on par, that's a good argument. I think it's a valid argument. <coughs> oh, sorry. So let me ask you this. Do you think that one of those two isn't going to England? 
Do you yeah. think there's an okay? Let me rephrase that question. Is there an opener's spot available to go to England? Or is it going to be Craig Tage and Zach? That's a, that's another good question. So this, this this sort of depends on things because then Tage, I think Tage is for me, like I said, Tage is 50 50. I think he'll be in the squad. Whether he makes the 11, I don't know how they're going to base that. But that's, that's definitely up for question based on the form. However, mm. if Tage isn't in the 11, you have to have an opener who's coming into 11. If it's not going to be McCaskey, I mean, a lot of people are, in the comments are going to say um, Mikhail Louis, who I'm sure we'll yeah. get onto. He's been in the runs. However, surely you can't throw Mikhail Louis after one regional season into that surely 11. Not. So, surely, surely not. not. <laughs> surely not. So I don't know if there's another... I can't see... It. Sure, then it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one. It, logic would say McCaskey and Tage go to England then. Um, but then this West Indies cricket, Mikhail Louis might just get fast-tracked in. Might get fast tracked. Okay, so then let's let's deal with that argument. If Mikhail Louis does get fast tracked in, which who's not going to England? McCaskey. McCaskey's not going. Oh snap. Okay. So we're saying there is a question mark about whether McCaskey goes to England. Not Tage you think goes, even if it's just as backup. Yeah, I think Tage okay, goes because fine. no one there's not been two openers. Other than Craig's going, so there's not been two alternative openers who have comprehensively outbatted Tage. You've got Mikhail Louis, but there's no one yeah. else. McCaskey's just reached par with him. Fine. I hear that argument. Obviously, people get at me and what well, say get at me, get at Santoki in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> if you disagree so, or agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> I might, I might to, I'm gonna do this for every point. So what, who are you saying? Who, what are your two? <laughs> <laughs> no, I well I think the point you've raised that McCaskey hasn't substantial substantially outbatted Tage is a valid point. No. You can't drop you can't drop Tage and McCaskey. One of them's definitely staying, at least. Yeah. And at that point, what oh, what the selectors have to ask themselves, whoever the selectors are at that point, is does Tage's international experience matter over McCaskey's? Yeah, just over McCaskey. If people are determined to bring Mikhail Louis in, do you keep someone who's at least got some international experience? In reserve. So if Mikhail, let's just say argument's sake, they did the following, Santoki. Let's just say Mikhail Louis gets called up to England. And let's just say they actually put him in the lion's den and say you're the new West Indies test opener with um with Craig Brathwaite. If Mikhail Louis in his first two test matches in England got duck four, five, seven, he's dropped by the third test, right? Do you want Zachary McCaskey in the background or Tay Shandapal in the background? Tay in that, in that scenario, that yeah, is, it's got it, it would have to be Tage, yeah. right? So the question, therefore, that people need to ask themselves before they, they come for us in the comments <laughs> is, fine if you want to drop Tage, but we're not saying drop Tage from the squad. I think we're saying there may be an opener spot in the start in 11, but people can get us. Anyway, Santoki, let's move on. Uh, the number three in Australia was Kurt McKenzie. Mm. Now, Kurt McKenzie has had a dreadful... Um, a domestic season uh, for Jamaica. I mean, Jamaica have been predictably dreadful as usual. Uh, Mackenzie, at the time of us recording this, in fact, Jamaica are batting at the moment versus Trinidad, and Mackenzie is currently 24 not out from 50 balls. So he might, for all I know, he might go on to make his best score of the tournament. At the time of recording us in Tokyo, Mackenzie's batted 11 innings, 260 runs at an average of 24. No hundreds, no 50s. That's our test match number three. Hmm. I still think he's going to England, though, Santoki, regardless. You think, well, what is the, what's your reasoning behind that? Because he was the top run scorer in Australia, so they're yeah. just going to reward him. And this is an example of where the Australian premium means mm -hmm. that someone like McKenzie is going to get rewarded, even though he's completely out of form, because he has to be. It, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that's the way it should be. But he's going to just get rewarded because of what he did in Australia. True or not? Yeah, no, that's true. 100% facts. I think Mackenzie, we said it after the Australia tour. The fact he was the highest run scorer in Australia, you guaranteed. You can't drop a man after. I know he's had a bad regional season, but based on the last international tour, that Australia premium, the Gabba premium, Mackenzie makes it. However, you have got uh, Casey Carty pushing. He's averaging 39, 433 runs across 11 innings. He's been batting at three for the Leeward Islands. So there has been an alternative that has presented itself. 
I just don't think they'll go there. But we can we can we can have that conversation. Number four, Alec Athenes. Um, Athenes this season, uh, he was down bad in Australia. At, to be fair, he had a really bad time of it. But in the domestic championship, eight innings, two hundred and eighty-two runs, average of forty. No wait, oh, sorry, no hundreds, three fifties. I mean, he's going to England. Yeah, I don't think Athenes there's any is, there. He's going yeah, to England. Okay. Yep. So there's no spot there. Number five in Australia was Kavem Hodge. Um, Hodge this season, um, eight innings, 289 runs, average of 41, 100 no 50s. And the reason why that average is so high is because he got 158 not out. Half of his runs this season came in a 158 not out versus CCC. And he's not made any 50s or 100s since. But he made a 70 something in Australia. So again, I think Australian premium means he's going to England regardless. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the, the Australian premium is high out here, man. The value is high. <laughs> the thing is, though, we got to, you know what? We have to consider as well, it's not just the on, on field performances in that Australian premium, it's the fact that they've done it as a team together, that team dynamic. Often, as a coach, Andre Coley, you probably mm. you might not want to disrupt that team dynamics. So that's also probably plays a factor in that premium as well. I agree with that, you know, that's a very good point. Um, Graves, Justin Graves was number six in Australia. Now, Graves with the bat, seven innings. I think he got a duck in the first, yeah, he got a duck in the first innings of this latest game versus Winwards. Seven innings for Graves, 253 runs, an average of 42. No hundreds, three fifties, uh, and with the ball, I don't think he's done anything with the ball. To be fair, uh, let me see. With the ball, two wickets uh, at an average of sixty nine. Yeah, I know. Um... Now, I think he's going. In, he didn't. Sorry, he wasn't good in Australia. By the way, he didn't score significant yeah. runs in Australia. I think he took a couple of wickets. This is the most difficult one for me. Does the Australian premium plus the fact he's averaged 42 in the domestic season get him to England? It has to if you're averaging 42. But then if you're bringing him in for wickets, though, with his with his medium pace, um, it's, it's a tricky one. And uh, with Jason Holder, obviously, commit playing county cricket for Worcestershire, Jason Holder's put his name into the mix for, for the England. Like, Jason Holder's pretty much a guarantee to be in that Test 11. Um just by committing to county cricket. So Greaves, I think, will drop out of the of the 11, but it's whether he makes the squad. I think he will because he's been of his batting average predominantly. Interesting. Now, we're saying a lot of names here, Santelki, because <laughs> when, I, when I come to... Oh, no, I hope I've got the right... Yeah. When I, when I come to you afterwards and say, so who's not going then? Anyways, uh, seven, let's put Kevin Sinclair there for now. No, Josh De Silva... Uh, we don't even need to talk about Josh. No. He's just going to us. He's just going to England. There's no point in even talking about what he's done. Yeah, hundred hundred today against Jamaica. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no debate. Yeah, no, no, no conversation there. So Josh to Silver goes now. From Josh, I want to talk about Tevin Imlat because Imlat went to Australia as the backup wicketkeeper slash can also bat a bit in general um, because him and or Josh probably could make the team just as batters if they ever wanted them to. Imlat this season, for what looks like it's going to be the uh, title-winning Harpy Eagles, is 380 runs at 54, 200s, 150. He's got to go England, surely. Imlat, yeah. 54, so Im averaging 54. But he hasn't kept wicket for Guyana, which is interesting. Um, I know some people have said he's had a hand, slight hand injury, which meant he hasn't kept wicket. So, if he hasn't been keeping wicket in the regional season, are you taking him as a backup wicket keeper or as a predominant batsman? That would be an interesting sort of question to look at. But do you think he goes regardless? Yeah, yeah, he goes regardless. Him, like, right. I think averaging fifty-four, um, captain of Guyana. Um, I think you'd go, he'd go as a batsman. Um, there's an argument you could go as a batsman, but the fact he is is a wicket keeper as well. Normally, um, just adds to that. Okay, moving on. Um... Sorry, making a noise there. Kevin Sinclair. I don't think there's any debate to be had. I don't no. even think we need to run through the numbers. He's just going England. It's just yeah. obvious he's going to England, yeah. right? 
So Kevin Sinclair is going. That's another tick. So far, Santoku, we've only said that one player might not be going to England. And the reason why people need to keep track of this is when people then tell us who their test match squad is to go to England, if there's only one spot available, so who's taking it then? You can't fit about 10 players into one spot. <laughs> this is going to be super interesting, right? Uh, let's move on. Uh, so that was Sinclair. Uh, let me call someone. Uh, let's pick somebody else who's a definite. Shamar Joseph? Yeah, Shamar Joseph, definite. 100%. Yeah. So he's a definite. Kamar Roach? Yeah, Roach, is that? Roach has to be a definite, yeah. Right, so that's now 12. So there's only three more players to run through. Gudakesh Multi? Yeah. Okay. So that's another definite. Alzari Joseph? Yeah. Joseph has to go, she would. And the last player, people will... Do you know who that last player was who went to Australia? I didn't even know till I looked up the squad. I'd forgotten he was even there, you know? Do you know who it was? No, go on. Surprise me. Akeem Jordan. I didn't even know he was there. Oh, oh yeah, it's not. I had no idea he was there. Akeem Jordan is not going to England. No, he's not going. Right. Perfect. So, Santoki, that was the 15-man squad that went to Australia that created history. One at the mm. Gabba, 29 years. We have just said that 13 of that 15 are going to England. What we think, we think that there is one spot <laughs> where Akeem Jordan will be replaced. Now, obviously, Akeem Jordan is a pacer, right? Uh, more so a swing bowler, but a pacer. I think, Santoki, that that spot goes to Jaden Seals. Yeah, easy. Right? Has to be. So that's, so that's easy enough. So Jaden Seals takes that spot. Which means there's only one spot left to go to England, Santoki, based on what we've just done. And that's we think we think one of the openers might not go. And would it be fair to say that they possibly will tell me Carl Louis to go? Whether as experience or whether to play, I don't know. I'm not, saying yeah, I mean... right thing, not saying it's the right thing to do, but it seems there's a groundswell of opinion that will get him over the line. Yeah, I think the recency bias is there. I mean, we've both been pretty clear that we don't think he, you should throw him into that England series, but he has put up the runs that century in the most recent game um, for Lee Woods has sort of thrown his, given his name, sort of serious credibility about being picked. So I think Mikhail Louis gets the call up. Right. So now I want everybody in the whole region who who watches anything that CCP do now explain the following to me, Sam Tolkien. That means the 15-man squad that goes to England is as follows. Craig Brathwaite, Tej Narayan Shandapur, Mikhail Louis, Kurt McKenzie, Alec Athenes, Kavem Hodge, Justin Graves, Josh De Silva, Tevin Imlat, Kevin Sinclair, Shamar Joseph, Kimar Roach, Gudakesh Moti, Alzari Joseph, Jaden Seals. Where's Jason Holder? Didn't we say... Oh... No, exactly, Santoki. Where's Jason Holder? How does Holder get in then? So Greaves has to go then, surely. All right, right. So I was waiting to see if you would say that. So I think, me personally, I think Holder walks back into the squad. Yeah, Not saying easy. the team, but in the squad. Now, if we agree that Holder's walking back in the squad, then Greaves can't, Graves can't go to England. Yeah, Graves can't go, yeah. Okay. So Graves is out. Now, there will be several people who will watch this video and say, what about, let's just call some random names. Jangu. Uh, what about, yeah, let me just call people at the top of the charts. What about Amir Jangu? What about uh, Casey Carty? What about, let me talk about realistic options. Uh, that's Brandon probably... King. Brandon King. Yeah, okay, let's just say random names like Brandon King. What about uh, Jamel Warrican? What about Rakeem Corman? What about <laughs> Jeremiah Louis? What about Anderson Phillip? The simple reality for me, Santoki, is there's only three spots in that 15-man squad where you could legitimately make an argument that those spots are available. An opener, Graves out for holder, Jordan out for seals. There's no other spots available, Santoki. Mm. But then this is where the politics might come into, not politics, but the complexities of selection going. All right, so let's say you're Desmond Haynes or, or mm. Coley. You've told Brandon King, listen... We know you're a good batter. Commit to playing regional season, at least four or five games, and we'll, we'll get you, like, you can get into the test squad. He hit 77 65 in his first game, doesn't come in for runs after that. But 
not calling Bandon King up to the test squad, essentially, I don't think that will throw him back into the wilderness. I don't think he'll come back into the into that question mark. So it'd be interesting to know if they do take a risk and, and will call up a Bandon King, not based purely on statistical information, but just based on getting him into the setup and having that commitment. But then who doesn't go then? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the complexities. I'm looking at the squad. They won't drop Kurt McKenzie. They won't. They won't. They won't drop Alec Athanase. They won't drop Kevin Hodge. The only way. But are you because remember remember Kurt McKenzie didn't get a contract. He was like the only player not to get a contract. Yeah. Yeah, but Santos. But if you're there, I think he will go. But at the same time, similar as we're saying, there grounds for Louis to get called up. There could be because of his down bad season for Jamaica. There could be grounds for him to get a drop as well. It's not out of the realms of possibility. Okay. No, I, I, do you know what? I hear that argument. I hear that, but I just think the Australian premium matters yeah. for someone yeah. like Kurt McKenzie. He, the, the, the argument for Kurt McKenzie, Remy, was he should never have got into the squad in the first place. But now he's there. Yeah. Now he's there. The Australian premium over overrides anything in the domestic championship. He could have averaged six. And he was probably still going to go to England because of what happened in Australia. Do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? So I think the only other realistic way you find a spot for anybody else is if you don't take Tej and you don't take McCaskey. But I just don't see them dropping two openers and bringing in two next random people yeah, it's not gonna happen. On, on an overseas tour. You might do that at home against Bangladesh or something. But I don't think you're doing that away against England. Yeah. I would love... Because, uh, Mash, we're going to get comments saying, what about Shay Hope? Shay Hope. No, there's no love, spot available. I would love there's to see... <laughs> Where, <there's laughs> I, no... would lo- <laughs> I would love to see the justification for Hope getting into this squad, having not played any Red Bull cricket for a year now. Um, and with what we've just outlined there. But there'll be people. There'll be people who, are, who will still justify why Hope should be in that England test squad. People, listen... People are going to watch this and cuss us out, saying we don't know what we're talking about. But I just want everybody to understand, when they when you start your cussing in the comments, I just want everyone to understand, explain yourself logically and rationally. Don't just throw random names at us and say, what about this man? What about that man? What about this? Explain how they get in the squad. Who are you not taking to England? And, and also, do you know where I think a lot of people go wrong when they look at West Indies cricket and try and analyse stuff? They don't, they don't think about things like, as we explained at the start, the Australian premium. There is a premium. Whether you like it or not, there is a premium. And think, you can't start any analysis without first considering that. I think, yeah, I think we're in a rare position. We're so used to taking licks in test cricket, normally after a test series... We're, make, we're, we're calling for wholesale changes. But mm. we won in Australia. We won at the Gabba. So the fact that it's happened means essentially the selection can be conservative because of that Australian premium. So I mm. think whilst people's natural inclination would be call up this man, call up Jangu, call up Brandon King, the fact that we're coming off a win in the Gabba, regardless of how they performed in the regional season, means that you're not going to see wholesale changes to the test squad. And that's sort of what we've outlined with the names we've listed. Yeah, and I think the final thing I'll just drop before we wrap this up is I think people also need to remember later on in the summer, South Africa A come to play West Indies A. So I think people need to think to themselves, wait a minute, before I randomly say call this man in, there is an A there is an A uh, series coming up. So the people you might want in, that's actually the perfect place to time, sorry, to test their credentials should you then want to call somebody up when some of these players that go to England inevitably drop off. Yeah. Anyways, listen, we said it would be a quick one, people. Um, whenever you get a whenever you get a CCP CCP episode that goes half an hour, you know that's us, that's us trying to be prompt, um, ruthless in the analysis, but giving you the same quality that we always give you anyways. Last things last, Santoki. Big up Hayley Matthews. I'll let you just do your, do a bit and piece on Hayley Matthews and then we'll wrap. Yeah, Hayley Matthews, 100 and, 140 not out against Pakistan. Led West Indies women to a win in the first ODI. I think she was named yesterday or the day before yesterday Wisden's leading T20 cricketer across both genders. 
um, just for her performances highlighted by her century against Australia last year. And just match what she's continued to do. I think if, even if you take if you take today as a microcosm, West Indies scored 269. She hit 140 of those runs and was not out. And that sort of shows not only her talent, but also the fact that she's having to do that, carry a big burden in that side by being a leader, performing with the runs. And she took three wickets as well on top of mm. that. So remarkable player, um, I think, goes beyond West Indies in terms of her talent, in terms of talking about a, a great cricket art, um, regardless of men's and women's. She just stood out, really. And long may it continue. And hopefully we see West Indies women's team improve as well alongside that, just to give her that support. Yeah, I, we, I used to have this notion that uh, it's Haley or bust in terms of how the West Indies women's team performs. But actually, what we what I'm starting to hope is going to happen is that because her performances are so elite, I'm just hoping that a few players get carried along in her slipstream. Yeah. Like, obviously, they'll try to rise to her standards and they won't be able to because she's a, a generational player. But by trying to mirror her, some of those players within that team will raise their standards naturally. So, you know, good on the West Indies women. Obviously, they've still got some more ODI games in that series and then the T20s. People continue to rally and follow, etc. But, people, as ever, we've been the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Uh, TikTok. Web yeah, with the times. <laughs> website um, <laughs> carryingpodcast.com if you want to support us financially every little dollar pound whatever counts www.patreon.com forward slash carry cricket content never stops content keeps going look out for some more stuff over the forthcoming days I've been Marshall St. Patrick Hewitt that's been Santoki Nagulendron thank you and good night we rule the cricket world now the rules Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. 